I have done more testing on Apple Studio Display and found a few more interesting facts about it. Some of these are going to be related to color management. Let's find out. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. The Studio Display model I order for testing is the one with anti-reflective coating. In Apple parlance, this means you are going to get a glossy panel. Case in point, let me show this to you. I'll angle this up a little bit and you can see my key light reflecting. I'll turn this a little bit more and you can see my fill light reflecting on the display. And trying to set this up where there are no reflections on the video is a very careful maneuver. The other thing that you're also going to find out is when you try to adjust the display, whether you're trying to tilt it back and forth or turn it left to right, chances are you are going to touch the edge of the display and it is a fingerprint magnet. So make sure to have your lens cleaning cloth ready. And if you like, you can purchase the Apple polishing cloth, although I highly think that it is not necessary. If you are going to get this display for your workflow, I highly recommend that you get the nano texture etching option, especially if you're a pro and if your environment is a little bit brighter or not as well controlled for lighting, I would definitely consider that option because the reflection is definitely one of those things that really gets you. There are two fans inside this display and yes, even in this thin design, it does need a fan because there is a power supply unit on the inside and those fans are cooling component in addition to the power supply. The fans are running all the time. If you put your hands at the very top, you can feel a light wind coming out. If you put your ears next to it, you can hear it. It is for the most part fairly silenced and it runs much more quieter than the Mac Studio, both with the M1 Max and also the M1 Ultra. There are no power buttons on the display and this is okay because it is heavily reliant on the computer. So if the computer tells it to sleep or turn the display off after a certain inactivity duration, it will do that. You can certainly have the computer go to sleep too, to which it will put the display to sleep. And this functionality, I believe works on the PC as well, based on my testing. So you can put the PC to sleep or shut it down and the display will also go off as well. But that doesn't give you a lot of room for control. But one of the things that you can do, for instance, let's say you're exporting a lot of files to Lightroom and you're about to leave the room. You don't want to have the display being on. You can manually trigger the display sleep and I'll show you how. Simply go into System Preferences, Mission Control, and you can use Hot Corners. So you can set all the four corners of your display to do a different function. For instance, I will set the bottom left to put the display to sleep. The one thing you have to remember is that you don't want to put your cursor there on the bottom by accident. Otherwise, your display will constantly go to sleep all the time. But let's say if I want to have the display go to sleep now, I would simply drag it to the bottom left of the screen and now the display is asleep. If I want to turn it back on, I can simply just touch the keyboard or the trackpad or mouse and that will come back in. This also works the same way with the trackpad and the mouse. Just have to move the cursor into the corner of your screen. With that being said, this also works with a PC. I have linked this up to my Dell XPS 7590 using a USB-C cable and it's able to drive this display at 5K native 60 Hertz. Do keep in mind that not all PCs is able to drive a 5K display at a high refresh rate. So sometimes it will default to a lower resolution, for example, a 4K equivalent or something like that, which can easily happen. The functionality or the basic functionality rather works on a PC. For instance, the webcam works, the speaker works, the microphone works, but that's pretty much the extent of it. You can't really use any of the spatial audio function on the speaker because that is a Mac centric function. There is no center stage in a webcam, so it doesn't zoom in and pan and out, even though there may be iOS running on board. You can't invoke Siri from this display when you have a link up to a PC. And I'm also willing to go and say that you can't really do any type of updates on the display as well when you have this link up to a PC. In addition, all the color reference mode and white point fine tuning options are unavailable to you. So if you really want to choose the color gamut that you want to use and you're linking this up to a PC, well, you're kind of out of luck. You need a Mac in order to do that. And speaking of the reference mode, there are a few things that I found out about this display that is fairly interesting. We talk about the reference mode. All of Apple new displays now generally have the reference mode that you would choose for your pro color workflow. You can certainly customize this reference mode based on your color workflow, the white point that you need, 
and also the different gamma functions, which is great. You can also go in and do a fine tune calibration. This is what I call the white point fine tuning on the display. My initial thought and understanding was that all those data are stored on the computer because the only display from Apple that I had a chance to really test with this new paradigm for color management is the one built into 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. Oh boy, was I wrong. So if you've done all those things on this display and you take another computer and link it up to this display, all of those custom presets that you have created including the fine-tuned calibration value are stored on the display itself. So this makes it a little bit easier if you want to switch between multiple computers, knowing that your colors are going to remain fairly consistent on the panel. This is a fairly great thing. I think this is a move in the right direction for Apple to make transitioning the computer and the display fairly easily because everything is stored there. When you link up the display to the other computer, the last reference mode that you have selected will be the mode that the display is in automatically. And I find this rather surprising when I was linking this up to my other computer. So I just technically found that out. Another thing that I also found out in updating my Mac OS is there is a firmware update already on the display. I believe this update the iOS and pretty much it's just done all through the Mac. The Mac will tell you that we need to restart in order to upgrade your computer. I said yes. And you find this display going dark. There's three dots on the display denoting that it is doing an update and is telling you that the display is updating. Do not unplug any cables from the display or turn off the power, which I think is very neat. Now, if you link this up to a PC, there is absolutely no way that you can get a firmware update. I'm not sure though, if you link this up, for example, to an iPad, you know, running iPad OS, can you get the firmware update? Will this come with the iPad or not for the display? I don't know about that one. So if any one of you know that, let me know in the comments below. The other thing to note about the reference mode for this display is that it respects the color gamut that you choose. Primarily, if you're a photographer or doing video, there's really only two gamut you're going to be selecting, either P3 to work in the largest one possible, or choosing either sRGB or Rec. 709, which are pretty much clumped together in the setting for this display. After setting all those different color gamut mode and running the calibration, for instance, if I set it to P3, run the calibration using Calibrite Color Checker Solution with GB LED as a backlight option, I'm able to get the gamut that responds really closely to display P3. If I set the reference mode, for instance, to sRGB Rec. 709 and run the calibration, I get a smaller color gamut that conforms really nicely to sRGB. So the reference mode on this display definitely respects the color gamut that you have chosen. This is very different than the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro when I was trying to run the calibration, but I think the reason that's happening on those laptop is because they're using a mini LED backlight display and the technology is super new. We don't necessarily have the matrix data, which is the spectral information, how these sensors should understand and read the display and calibrate it properly yet, which is the reason why when we select, for instance, sRGB on those laptop, it doesn't really conform to sRGB. It just conformed to this weird color gamut in between, I would say like sRGB and display P3. So hopefully, Calibrite will release an update to their software soon and also X-Rite so that we can calibrate the mini LED laptop display properly. And with that said, one more thing I want to talk about is the uniformity of this panel. This is done through some testing. So let's have a look at the result. Based on what you're seeing so far, this is pretty much using Calibrite color checker profiler software to run this. And this is in a grid of nine. You can see that the white and the gray does a fairly great job when it comes to the dark area. This is setting the Delta E 2000 threshold of five. There are some areas where the Delta E is a little bit high on this display. As you can see those, the one in the red. Now I want to give us kind of just a point of comparison to look at. For instance, I'll compare this to a BenQ SW271C, this is their latest 27 inch 4K hardware calibrated display for photographers that can show 99% Adobe RGB. And this is the one that contains BenQ latest uniformity technology, uniformity version three. You can see that pretty much with a Delta E2000 threshold of five, it passed in all the categories. And also the other display that could be seen as the competition to this display too is BenQ PD3220U. This is part of their designer series and this is 
doing the test in DCI-P3 color mode, you can see that it passed really well with the uniformity that they have done the calibration of the factory where the Apple Studio display still shows some uniformity issues in the darker gray area. So if you want the display with a grid uniformity, this may not necessarily be the one that you want to consider, especially in the darker color areas. Otherwise, that's all I found out about the studio display so far. If you have any questions or comment, let me know below. Give this video a like, subscribe, and hit the bell you new. And remember, in art we trust.